Hey everyone, it's Josh, and I'm back with another RayWinderlich.com screencast. SwiftUI was announced at WWDC 2019, and it looks to be a game changer in how developers create user interfaces for their iOS, watchOS, tvOS, and even macOS applications. Instead of developers telling the system how to create a user interface, for instance, make an instance of a UI text view, then make an instance of UI table view cell, and add the UI text view to the UI table view cell, SwiftUI lets developers declare what they want to put in the UI. It's almost as straightforward as saying, I would like a UI text view in my UI table view cell, please. And the Swift UI framework determines, based on standards in Apple's human interface guidelines, how to add that text view into the table view cell and apply any other requests you've made along the way. Before we get started, a very important thing to note. Following along with this screencast will require you to install not only Xcode 11 Beta 1 or above, but also Mac OS Catalina Beta 1 or above to take full advantage of the new features in Xcode 11, in particular the preview pane. Before we get into a demo, let's talk theory for a bit. In UIKit, views are derived from the UI view class, which means that a lot of other baggage comes along with it. This can be good if your custom class needs to grab something from the parent class, but it also means that all the things you don't need also come along for the ride. In addition, UI view based objects are passed around by reference. In Swift UI, views are actually structs, which are of course passed by value and only contain the absolute minimum needed to describe the body of the view. In fact, the only requirement of the view protocol is a body property that is itself a view that declares what user interface elements make up this view. This is clearly recursive, but that recursion stops as soon as you get down to the primitive elements, such as image and text that Apple provides. Apple strongly suggests making your views as simple and lightweight as possible. You can, however, compose your view from other views, potentially resulting in a complex view tree. SwiftUI handles this though by collapsing the tree down into a streamlined view that is optimized for rendering. The best way to witness the power of SwiftUI is to see it in action. For this demo, I'm going to start building an app that will show information about the employees here at Razeware. Let's get started. To begin, let's make a new single view project in Xcode 11, making sure to select the Use Swift UI checkbox. Call the project Employees and save it to a convenient location. Before we start adding employee information, let's take a quick look at the Swift UI file that comes with the project, Content View, and play around with it a bit. As you can see, the content view defined there is a struct that adopts the view protocol, as was discussed earlier. As you can see, a text view, hello world, makes up the body of the closure that goes into the view constructor, and that text view is rendered in the preview pane to the right. Be sure to hit resume above the preview pane if needed. Xcode pauses rendering of the preview pane when big changes to the code take place. Okay, let's use the starter code and craft it for our employees app. Change the hello world to Ray Winderlich. As you can see, the text immediately updates in the preview pane. I can add a few more text views, updating the names to reflect a few other members. This time, I'll add the first text view by using the library, choosing the text view and dragging it into the preview pane right below the existing text view. Before you drop it in, Xcode will tell you it will add this new view to a vertical stack along with the existing text. Once you drop it in the preview pane, you can see that indeed, a VSEC now wraps the two text views. For the second text view, I can do the same, but this time drop it into the source code below the one I just added. I could keep adding employees like this, but I want to be a little more generic in my data input, so I'm going to encapsulate the employee information in a struct called employee. Add the struct and have it adopt the identifiable protocol. This will allow views like lists to uniquely identify the employee in question, and we'll do that with a UUID as one of the properties. While I'm in this file, I want to add some test data that I can reference from the other file. Now since we have the employee struct defined and a set of test data to go along with it, let's update our view to use that. First, add an employee's property to the content view. 
Then update the constructor in the content view preview struct at the bottom of the file to pass in the test data array. Finally, remove the text views we defined earlier and replace them with a for each call. This is a special syntax in Swift UI that iterates through the passed in collection and generates views on demand. Okay, this is looking a bit better, but I really want to see it in the form of a table instead of a series of text views. That's an easy change thanks to Swift UI. Simply change for each to list. This looks good, although it's writing up against the top of the Chrome. Let's wrap our content view in a navigation view to make it look a bit better in the preview. Let's take a second and talk about what we did here. Without any table view delegate methods at all, we were able to build a table with about three lines of code. That's pretty amazing. Now let's add a little polish to our list. We've got it living in a navigation view in our preview, but there's no title. That's easily changed with a modifier. Modifiers take in an existing view, in this case the list, and modify it to return a new view. Let's add a navigation bar title to the list. Append the following to the list, and yes, it can be on a new line. Next, let's add the title field from the employee struct. First, command click on the current text view holding the employee name and select Embed and VStack. Grab a new text view and place it below the employee name like we did earlier. Update the text to reflect the employee title. The new field appears, but the alignment is off because the VStack is currently obeying the defaults from SwiftUI. Let's update that alignment to be leading. This is looking better, but I want to de-emphasize the title. So let's shrink the title font with another modifier. Select the font modifier from the library and put it after the title text view. Change the font to footnote. There you have it, a nicely formatted table of employees ready for placement in a navigation view, all in about seven lines of code. But what do we do with the table? Typically users can tap a table row to go to something like a detail view. This is really easy with the help of a navigation button. Let's wrap the existing VStack in a navigation button and just have it show the user's name in a text view for the detail view. We can always go back and prove that later. The preview pane now shows indicators on the right hand side of the rows, which is great, but we can't click on them, at least not in this preview mode. We have to use the play button on the right side of the preview to go into live mode. This will send the code to the simulator and bring back a live functioning view to your preview pane. Note that depending on your computer speed and the complexity of your view, this may take a little time to become live. Again, with just one additional view wrapping on our VStack in the list, we get the ability to transition to the detail view. No prepare for segue, no delegate methods, nothing. Swift UI figures out exactly what we want and handles all the details for us. Swift UI makes it really simple to describe the user interface components you want to put in your view, literally letting you list the elements in the order you want. In addition, modifiers allow you to easily adapt those views from a wide array of customizations, such as corner radius, font, and colors, just to name a view. That's a quick look at how SwiftUI allows you to declaratively write your user interface and how easy it is to customize those views with modifiers. I declare this screencast to be over, so keep coming back to raywinderlick.com for more screencasts and tutorials on iOS. See you next time.